and welcome everyone it is Angela here again today I hope that you guys are all doing really well um, I'm very excited to have you join me today to share with you um, a little tip uh, that we picked up from Hilda who's the admin lady in my group um, and Hilda shared this little method um, and quite a few people have asked me uh, to share with you what Hilda did. So thank you Hilda for allowing me to share this today. Um, I'm going to show you how to microwave dry um, some flowers. Now I'm working on wildflowers as you guys know, so the wildflower journal. So I did just go and do a little forage this morning on a very early walk with Abby this morning and it even we got soaked because you know at the moment I don't know what's happening here in the UK but we seem to be having all the seasons uh just not snowing uh, you know but everything else it's broad beautiful sunshine the one moment and the next minute it's, it's pelting down with rain and then it's sunny again and oh my gosh I don't know what's happening Anyway, so we did get caught a little bit in, in an unexpected little rain cloud that's hovered above us, but that soon passed and we had some great fun foraging around. So this was my morning expedition um, foraging exercise. This is what I've got. These are all wildflowers um, and I picked them up um, on our walk, as I said, with Abby. So We've got loads here and um, the only thing I couldn't find were the beautiful orange ones I had before, but that's okay. Uh, you need to have a few things to do this, first of all. Uh, the very first thing I would suggest that you get hold of are some flowers. Now, they don't have to be wildflowers. If you don't walk out or get out, um, you know, you can use normal flowers. You know, This is what I have and I'm going to show you today. So you see you don't even need to buy anything. This is just stuff that grows in nature all over the place. The other thing you're going to need is some kitchen towel paper. All right, that's going to be our blotting paper. You need a pair of scissors and I have grabbed some standard copier paper here. So any scrap paper that you have, it doesn't um, need to be fancy this is just standard 80 gram or um, the usual 28 pound weight paper all right so those are the things that we're going to do and of course you'll need a microwave so I didn't bring the microwave up to the craft room and I don't have the tripod to take it so we're going to have some dodgy camera viewing when I go and do that down there but anyway let's get going let's talk about what you've got to do so you're going to take a sheet of paper um, you're going to fold that in half and I think that's the best size because this will fit into my microwave so just make sure that when what the piece of paper you use is going to turn freely on the microwave turntable that's the first thing so that's what we're going to do and then I'm going to open that up I'm going to take a piece of the kitchen roll like that um, yeah I'm going to do it this way and then what we want to do is, and you can fold off or tear off or whatever the extra bits on the side. I'm just going to uh, fold it under like that. Um, and I'm going to stay within the parameters of this um, kitchen roll. So I'm going to just turn that under. You can cut it off, tear it off, whatever you like. All right, so now we're going to start taking our little flowers. And I've got this little one, which looks like a type of a thistle, and it's so mini. I just couldn't help myself so I'm going to put that as a tubbier one so it's a bit um, fat <laughs> now don't be afraid to pick up leaves these are some of the leaves for um, that I used I'm going to put those that way down so that I can get them as splayed as possible um, we've got this now you can either have them on the stalks as this one is and I'm going to try that I'm going to try that um, trying to get it a little bit flatter so I'm just going to nip it in the stem there just to get it to sort of angle all right um, with the tubbier ones like the standy line I'm going to try and cut it as close to the top as I possibly can that's what you need the scissors for and I'm going to try and lie that flat and as I say the chunkier ones I'm going to put in the middle so we've got some of this looks like mini cow parsley but heaven knows what it is I don't know I'm not great with the names of the flowers these things are tough <laughs> but we're gonna try 
um, I thought, you know, when you're decorating, you want to have different types. So I'm going to put down some of this. That one's lying the angle I wanted. This one, not so much. All right, so I'm going to carry on putting down some of these. Now, the, the thing to remember is, like I said, gather some leaves so when you're doing your arranging, try and get them to lie as flat as you possibly can. Um, so I'm putting those that way. I might need to put that one that way, I think. Um, and then I've got some of these little daisies. And I'm going to, um, some of them you can lie with the, the full length. Some of them you can lie, you know, cut flat at the top like I've shown you. Um, other ones I have are these sorts of daisies. And I'm going to try one little stalk. I've got some like that. So let's try these this way. We don't know what we're going to get, but we, it's trial and error. <laughs> we'll learn together. That's the way. Oh, I managed to... Um, Avoid some, oh, this is very spiky, but it's a bramble. Uh, it's a bramble, but I just love uh, the little flower at the top there. So I'm going to try and cut that as close to the top as possible. So we'll, we'll try and get that on. It's full of, full of spikes. Um, and what else have I got? I'm trying to have some variety here. So we've got some of these and I've got another bramble. I got I managed to get some of these. I love these. So um, we'll see how we go if it's going to um, try and get those those little petals to splay outwards if you can. All right, so I'm going to carry on doing this. Um, and I will show you what it looks like before I um, the next step. Okay, so I've got everything lined up here. Um, I would suggest that you don't put them too close together because they will spread out a little bit. And the other thing I would like to mention is just bear in mind that um, different flowers based on size are going to have different amount of times they require for drying. So... Um, I have just put in a, a random amount. This is my test batch to see how things go. And we will, um, you know, check intermittently. So we've got everything there. Um, we want to take another piece of kitchen towel now. I'm just going to fold it to the size more or less. Um, and put that on the top there like that. Then we are going to fold our piece of paper over. Um, and just give it a little press, um, pick it up, and I'm going to um, put it into my little tray here, and I'm going to take that downstairs. Now, there's just a few things. Um, I will pick up the, the recording of this downstairs quickly. Um, just a few things. When I do this, um, as I said, things are going to go at a different uh, rate uh, based on the thickness and the size of the flower and, you know, the petals and how they because of the moisture, obviously. Um, but microwaves also differ. So bear that in mind. Uh, your microwave will not be the same as my microwave. I do these um, little bits in 30 second increments. All right. So I will meet you downstairs and um, we'll take it from there. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We are now in my kitchen. I'm now going to put in this sheet onto the plate in my microwave, and then I'm going to put that bowl on top of it. So let's get going. So we've got my microwave up here. I want to just get that onto the plate and then position my Pyrex bowl to fit on top of here. Let me turn it so I can see difficult with one hand <laughs> so you want to get that positioned nicely like that and then you're able to close your microwave all right and then we are going to press our 30 second increments here so I've got 30 seconds on my microwave at full power 
and you can hear it starting to crackle and it's not popcorn. <laughs> Alright, so that has finished and we are now going to take off. Now bear in mind before you touch your Pyrex, it might be hot. So just be careful about that. So take your Pyrex dish off. We're going to have a little peek in here. I can see that um, some of them are drying but some of them are still moist. So we're going to just take our Pyrex dish. I'm going to change the angle a little bit. We're going to do it for another 30 seconds. Okay, so that's ended. We can open that up. Again, be mindful that this might be quite hot. It's quite warm. Um, and again, I want to just have a little look inside here. Oh, it's smelling juicy. It's smelling good. It's smelling very herbaceous in here. Um, oh, they're drying really nicely. I think another... 15 seconds will suffice so let's just do that again so that's what you need to do you need to just make sure that um, do them in 30 second increments check to see how dry or how wet they are and you can gauge it from there you might need to take out a few but if you think about putting in the the juicier ones together and the thinner ones together that would be probably a lot easier so let's just try that again Right, so I'm going to do 15 seconds. And as I said, mine's on full power. Mine's a 900 uh, watt microwave. So depending on what yours is, you just need to check it. But if you do it in half a, half a minute, 30 seconds at a time, um, that would work perfectly. All right, so let's just get this out again. It's really hot now you might need to use your oven gloves and then... now as you can see this is quite wet um, on the top here uh, we want to open that up you can see all the moisture that has come out um, and the tiling is is pretty wet the kitchen tile so we want to just open that up carefully and we might need to just move some over but let's just have a look you can see these are quite dry, these leaves. These little ones are also, if I feel them, you can feel um, everything is coming together pretty well. Some have worked well. This looks beautiful. Um, some have not worked so well. <laughs> but again, gosh, this it feels like we've dried them in the book for weeks. Honestly does. So I do recommend giving this a go. Here's this little one. And then we've got one that I did on my own, on its own here as well. That one didn't work out so well, but we live and we learn <laughs> so we can see what we've done. Right, I'm going to leave these um, just to cool down a little bit and we're going to see what we're going to make with them. So I'll see you back at my craft right, So I'm back upstairs. Luckily now I've got two, ha two hands, so much easier. I just wanted to share with you, these are um, some... Uh, flowers are dried in a book um, over a few weeks uh, and you can see um, they've done pretty well as well but sometimes you don't always have weeks to do things I was just trying different things there and those seem to work really well so that's that I've done quite a few in the microwave downstairs this is some extra sheets I did um, this one is just I oh know it wasn't that one um, so you can see we've got quite a few different op options here to use and um, I think that we can make something really exciting for our journal and even cards you know the the, the opportunities are endless now I'm just going to grab my um, tweezers here uh, just to gently pull this one up it's a dandelion uh, I'm hoping I can see that how it's turned out um, not the best but as I say a lot of them worked perfectly they feel nice and crispy <laughs> um, so you know we've got something we can work with here um, yeah so I quite like that I love these single ones as well those have worked out perfectly um, yeah so it's just trial and error to see what works and what doesn't work these ones work beautifully 
so yeah we've got lots here and of course the the other lot that i did below that i showed you earlier so they're they're nice and cool now so you know you don't want to use them when they're warm um that way you're going to get a uh, sort of moisture um make sure that they are you know room temperature before you start using them in your projects all right so i'm going to um share with you a couple of things that we can do quickly so don't go away back in the craft room now so we're going to put together a little project really quick and easy but i'm hoping it's going to inspire you to use those dried flowers that you're going to try and make so what have i got well i'm going to show you what i did here's a little example of a, a kind of a specimen card really um, that i made if you can see using some of my wildflowers you can see i have the glue seeped through there so lesson learned um but i've used some of those dried flowers we made in the microwave added some little bits of ephemera and made a very sweet little card so i'm just looking for um if you can see through there all right so we're going to make this quickly and it's not difficult at all so i'm going to put that to the side there and we can just follow along right what i did was i took this particular page um, which is one of the background pages in my wildflower wishes kit and i have written down some measurements for you um, this one measures well this is for the one side so i'm going to just double it you need to cut a piece of paper that is six and a half inches in uh, width and you're looking at four and a quarter inches in height we then will fold that in half to a three and a quarter that way and four and a quarter that way all right so six and a half by um four and a quarter nine centimeters that would be 16 and a half in width and 10 and a half in height in centimeters all right and we're going to effectively just fold that in half so that's the piece of paper that i had it was just some scraps that i was working with I don't know why Abby's barking probably Amazon <laughs> all right so we've got that folded in half and then what I did was I took a piece of packaging bakewell slices my favorite <laughs> um, I've made a little template for myself which really is two inches that way and three inches that way so that's five centimeters or seven and a half all right just cut it out and i'm going to use that to make a little window here on my piece of paper so i'm just gauging this so um, by eye sort of centralizing it there I'm going to take my pencil and i'm just going to draw a little line around that like that okay there we go and then we can just put our template back up there take your ruler um, and not a craft knife or you can use your scissors you know whatever it suits you and while these two pieces are together along the fold line i find it easier to do it when you've got them um, joined and folded in half so what i'm doing now is very precariously trying to see where the line is <laughs> without getting my head underneath the camera and then I'm going to turn that round. We want to go to here. And we just keep cutting that out. So it is easy with a craft knife. If you have not got a craft knife, by um, making a hole in the center and then getting your, your pair of scissors blade to the edge, it will work as well. But yeah. Okay, so there we go now it's just a case of lifting out those bits she says <laughs> all right so that was amazon <laughs> okay so we just loosened those with our blade and i would hang on to those and make something out of that the ones i cut out before had those pieces on so i will make little cards or something with that maybe with a dried flower or something little cluster on it so don't throw that away okay so we're opening that up now and what we want to do is i've got some acetate here now i know you probably can't see it but this acetate is three inches by 
just short of four. So as long as they can fit about a quarter of an inch on each side, um, then you're good to go. Now what you want to do is you want two pieces like that. Two pieces I've got here. So I want to stick one on each side now. <laughs> yeah, don't go near the, the frame. I've learned that now. I should know. I didn't. I thought I didn't, but you know. Right, so I'm staying a good quarter inch away from the edge here. And I want to just stick that down. So when the glue smooths out, it's not going to go anywhere near my window. Okay, so do that on both sides. Both sides. And I, I think I was successful there now. So we've got our two windows in. Um, and now what I did was I took one of the tabs. So you get these tabs in my uh, Wildflower Wishes add-on kit. But also if you have a punch, you can do those as well. Um, so I'm just folding that in half. I think I'll have the daisy on the front. <laughs> And I'm going to just glue that together quickly like that and you can take your distress ink and I just like to give it a little bit of it's the white edges that I don't like showing from the paper all right now on the back of that I'm going to just put a little bit of glue just so that I can fix this to the top all right so I like this mat because I can see here Right, that's the middle. And I'm just going to glue it on the one side at this point. And then I'll close it just to make sure I've got it straight. There we go. We're not closing it yet. Okay. Right, so that's where we are. Now we want to put our little arrangement in here. So from what I did earlier, uh, I'm just going to grab a couple of these goodies. So... This is one of those tiny little uh, wildflowers and one of the we uh, the weeds, listen to me, one of the leaves that we dried, which they're all nice and really dried perfectly. I'm going to trim this one a little bit, just take a little bit off there. Um, we want that there. Um, I had one of the little daisies, so that one dried really nicely. And I'll probably just take a bit off there as well. And it's just a case of getting a little arrangement in place. Um, I've got one of these. They look like little thistles. Maybe they are. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and I think it's just slightly too long. So I might make that one shorter, I think. And I'm going to put that one over there. Let's just make this one shorter. Right, I think that's enough. I did have a bit of a orangey one I found from before, but I think that it's going to be too much for that. So I'll save that for another time. All right, so now you can with this one. I did touch a bit of glue on there. You can't see because it dries clear. So I would suggest that. So let's just move this a little bit out the way. Whoops. And let's start sticking those bits down. So this is the flatter side. Now I'm not putting a lot of glue, really little. And I'm going to use my tweezers just to help me position these properly. Because I don't want to get too much glue on my fingers. Alright, now it will dry. And that's why I did the other one before. Right, now let's try this daisy. So we just want a, a few little drops. And you can try it without the glue, but I'm convinced that it's not going to stay in place. So I don't know if you want to risk that. You're welcome to try it. Um, then the little thistle. I'm calling it a thistle. I'm sure you guys know what the proper name is. Um... And I do love thistles. I remember going to Scotland, seeing the most beautiful thistles there. I've got photos of them. They're absolutely stunning. If I find the photo, I'll put it at the end of the video. Right. Um, and then 
this little one. It's looking like mini cow parsley, but it's not. But I'm, you know, I make up my own names when I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's still beautiful to me. Right. And then this little one. The, nothing like a finger just to squash it down. Okay, so we, that's where we are at the moment. Now, if you've got any glue where you don't want it, you can wipe it off if you see it. Otherwise, don't worry. Now, uh, this is where I went wrong last time. Don't go near the frame again, you know. Um, stay towards the outer bit, if you can. Like that. I'm not... Well, maybe I just did it a little thick. I'm not sure. Now, I'm going to stitch around it, so... You know, you don't have to, but just go carefully with the glue. Right, so we've got that bit down now, like that. And the thistle's a bit chunky. <laughs> okay, right. What I'm going to go and do now is um, I'm going to go and sew around this. Um, and I'll be back here in a moment just to show you the finishing bits. Okay, so I've stitched around here and you won't believe it. I've managed to squeeze out glue after being careful. Well, I'm not worrying because it dries clear, but still. Right, so I've stitched around the outer edge. And on this one, I stitched on the inner edge. And that's because this one's a bit chunky here. And I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to move. But there we go. That's where we are. Now, um, I'm going to do a few bits and pieces here. First thing is, I've got two of these die cuts. So this one I think is from a, a Christmas or holidays thing. I thought I'd put that on. And then this is one of the leaves from one of those, I think also Christmas thing. And I thought I'd just put those two on the edge here. Might go on the other side, I'm not sure yet. Uh, no, this side. Okay, so we'll stick those down ever so quickly. Okay, so I've got that there, a few bits going over, but I like that kind of look. And then just a little bit on this green, lovely sage color leaf. Um, and we'll just angle that a little bit, like that. Yeah, I like the combination of the paper flowers and all these different types of flowers. So there we go. Right, I've got a little scrap of a book page. Um, I keep this because I like to stamp on it and that's what I'm going to do. So as I said to you before, I've got the lovely field notes from Stampers Anonymous. I'm going to take out one of these stamps um, and I'm going to just use, I think, this one. It's got a number on it. And then my archival ink, potting soil. I love it. So we're just going to put that upside down. And I do it this way so that I don't get the edges of the stamp inked up. Then I'm going to just press that right over there. And there we have our little number. And then it's just a case of making sure it's dry. <laughs> uh, it's pretty quick to dry. And then just tear it with your fingers. That's what I do. Like that. And oh, this is a, a tight, really close to the edge, precision tearing this. <laughs> right, so let's um, just take the ink dauber. I'm going to do that. Right, and now we've got a little label to put down over there. You could put it up there. You know, that's also an option. We get that done. So we've got our first specimen card. Um, then I've also got a little two paper flowers. So that's like a peachy color one and a yellow. I've just sewn a little button on there. I'm going to just put it on, on the bottom here. I might actually put it, no, I'll put it on the bottom there. While that's drying, I noticed that my, I stuck some washi tape on, but you know, with washi, you've got to be, um, put some more glue on it. Right, so I'm going to put that on. I've got two little bits of washi here. I've got a little bit of green. So I'm going to put some glue on it. 
although the green one wasn't too bad but you know if you want this stuff to stick down just consider that I'll put it on this corner here so put that over there like that and turn it round and then just a little bit, bit of peach to go on top Amity Bloom's Nazi's washi, but I'm waiting for her to get stock again because the pink doesn't go with my. Um, there we go. So we've got that there, like that. So we just got to put in a little eyelet. So I've got my eyelet punch there. Uh, grab myself a little eyelet over here, metal eyelet. So. We'll put that in. These are rose gold. You can get them on my Amazon favorite tools list. And then just grabbing a piece of my Plum Boutique ribbon. And we're going to put that in over there. Right, and then we want some sharp scissors. So let's do that. And that oh, that one's a bit longer okay and there we have our little card how cute is that so yeah we've got two little cards um i've cut out from that piece of paper quite like them i might go and get a b and stick it on here somewhere um from my fussy cuts um but i really like how those have turned out and we will put those into our journal all right everybody i hope that that's been a fun friday and you've enjoyed drying some flowers in your microwave go and give it a go you're going to be pleasantly surprised you can do all sorts of flowers even they don't have to be wildflowers they can be from your garden so go and take a look um and give it a go and i will see you on sunday oh i almost forgot i have got a little card that i was working on um busy making a little card just to show you that if you're interested in seeing how i'm going to do this then how i did this um and the rest of it let me know and i can show you that on sunday if you like but until then um don't forget i have a sale running which ends at midnight on sunday so please go and take a look if you're wanting to pick up something there we've got some great offers um, and until Sunday, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.